All right. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Sensibly Cynical. Joining me now, she is a she is a super talented singer songwriter out of Texas, Aaron Duvall. What's going on? Hi, bud. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, thank you for doing this. Of course, I'm so honored to be here. Yeah, Thanks. so no problem. So we were talking off air, and you told me you had quite the journey. Can you uh, can you take us on that real quick? Like yeah, how did how did it all sure. begin and stuff? You know. <laughs> It's a, it has been a, um, you know, you know, you love something when you keep going back to it. There's no doubt about that. Um, it's been a journey around the sun. I started when I was very little, um, performing. Mm. I always was that person. So first of all, I am the fourth of five kids. Um, my parents have 16 grandchildren and I was that kid that was always putting on a show. Um, mm. and I started at a really, really young age because my parents had five kids. They always wanted to have like one standing date night and you should, right? Because right. you have five kids, you got to keep <laughs> yeah. love alive. And we had this really wonderful woman that would come every Saturday night and keep the kids. And she was my first audience member, which I thought was really so fun. So every Saturday I'd be like, Ooh, she's coming. She's coming. What am I going <laughs> to put on for her today? Right was just ingrained in me at such a really young age and then I started doing musical theater and then I was actually a cheerleader so I was always really looking, I was yeah <laughs> and I was always looking for the avenues to perform because I loved performing um in so many different facets of my life and then um I actually was going to go to NYU got callbacks for Tish but then I got into the University of Texas and I kind of at that point wanted to be a Was kid. it like that? Is that what yeah, it is? Yeah, a little hook and horns. <laughs> it's Texas so you weekend. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, at that point, wanted to kind of pause because my younger years were pretty busy, um, mm -hmm. constantly performing, really busy all the time. And I wanted to go to Texas and enjoy um, some time with my friends. Wait, wait, and wait, wait, wait. What do you mean enjoy? Did you mean go to clubs and stuff? Is that what, is that what you mean? <laughs> you know, get at the football game, uh, have a good time with my girlfriends. I mean, still my college <laughs> friends are still to this day, some of my best friends. Um, and I'm glad I did. Uh, NYU would have been an mm. amazing journey for me, but my freshman year was 9-11. Mm. And so that would have been within the first couple of weeks of being there, mm. uh, which would have been a different course in my life. Right. And so when I got out of Texas, I studied um, journalism. So I really honed like my writing skills, which was wonderful. Uh, and the communication school at the University of Texas is one of the top in the country. So I felt mm. like I got a wonderful education. Um, but music kept calling me back. And I so I went back to it at 22 and at that time, I my first manager, it's crazy, is uh, a guy named Paul Corzelius, who is John Bon Jovi's manager. Really? Has been his manager forever. <laughs> wow. And he was my first manager, and he had a business partner that was really invested in children's music. And they wanted me to look at doing that. And I created this fun animated character in 2006, um, and then... Did that for a really long time and then recorded my first debut album in LA with mm -hmm. a wonderful guy named Rob Giles. Uh, he was in The Rescues. He does a bunch of writing for, uh, let's see, like Grey's Anatomy and some things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and we used Alanis Morissette's band at the time to record mm -hmm. the album. So that was really fun. And we did a bunch of playing around and touring and then um, I had kids. And, and so I kind of pivoted and started doing a lot on the business side. Mm. And then I just kept being called back. And I knew that at some point in my life, I would get to a place where I could really put myself back out there again. And I would never really fully stopped. I was kind of more in a reflective phase, a lot of writing mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of, a lot of writing, a lot of time in the studio, but never having the ability to really like be out there uh, mm -hmm. with my face. Um, and then about three, two to three years ago, I got mm -hmm. called back and, um, now we're on this fun, amazing journey. It's like a freight train red, heading down that track <laughs> at a rapid speed. And um, mm -hmm. great team of people. My producers are amazing. Mm -hmm. And the new single drops tomorrow. So Yes, we are recording this on October 6th of 2022. And your uh, single comes out tomorrow. Can you talk about that? What's the name of it? It is Walking Country Song. 
Mm. Uh, it is a little bit like my anthem song. It talks about how my life has taken some really hard left turns. Um, but how do you turn your pain into beauty? And how do you rise from the ashes mm -hmm. and grow from? Because when you hit, you know, hard phases in your life, they can mm -hmm. either really put you in a standstill or you can grow from them and become a much better version of yourself that you're always meant to be. And I'm a big believer in the fact that sometimes these hard challenges in life are put there on purpose because you are meant to learn from them and evolve into the next version of yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and so walking country song is actually that it's um, a funny story, how the name came about. Um, I was on a call with some music industry people, two of them I knew uh, one of them I didn't. And uh, my friends that were on the call were like, Hey, tell them a little bit about yourself. You know, I've gone through a divorce and have four kids. And so there's, Mm -hmm. that aspects of it. And I told him about it and he goes, well, I mean, goodness, you sound like, and out of my mouth, I go, a walking country song. <laughs> and he goes, mm -hmm. exactly. <laughs> like heartbreak and, you know, rising from the ashes and all that just embodied mm -hmm. in one person. <laughs> yeah. And I was yeah. like, you're right. And he goes, you got to write that. And I was like, mm -hmm. you're right. I got to write that. And uh, I happened to be sitting in some random parking lot in a small town in Texas um, because I was, uh, at a friend's ranch and didn't have internet service there and had to take these calls. So wow. yeah, I left, left my kids with my family and went out to go take, uh, this call and was sitting in the middle of a teeny tiny parking lot in Glen Rose, Texas, um, and started jotting down this song, furiously mm -hmm. jotting down this song. Um, and here we are a couple of years later and it's coming out. So it's been a long journey figuratively. And literally, it sounds like. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. for, what's sure, the, for sure. What's the biggest like lesson you've learned from from all that? Like if you would go back, would you, you know what I mean? Like, well, I think in life or in regards just, to the just with the whole journey. journey yeah. The whole like, journey. Like you were talking about, like, is there a lesson that you've learned that you were like, all right. Man, you know. I tell you what, um, I think one of the biggest things that you really can't judge somebody until you have absolutely walked in their shoes. Mm -hmm. Because I think that everybody is pretty good about keeping face. And a mm -hmm. lot of times there's stuff going on behind closed doors that you're not aware of. So if someone seems to be having a bad day, um, I, I lend a lot of kindness. I think I yeah. lend a lot more kindness now in my life after going through my own experiences. Um, just because I, I don't think you really can understand yeah. what people are going through unless you've experienced it yourself. So I think that's probably the biggest thing. Um, I mean, we always preach the golden rule at my house and um, we're all God's children. Let's just treat everybody with kindness and mm -hmm. always cut everybody some slack. So that's probably yeah. the, in a nutshell, <laughs> the biggest thing. Yeah. For me, it's just like uh, talk about something that happened to me. Uh, so you know, and as it's everywhere in the United States, unfortunately, pan, not panhandlers, but kind of people that have the signs and they, you know, and you never know if they're lying or not. Right. So, but like, I happen to like have a Big Mac. I just went to like McDonald's <laughs> yeah. and I was just like, and the lady had a lady had a sign that said, like, I forgot what it was, like hungry, not looking for money, not in a mean way, but I'm just prep. I'm, yeah. I'm, you know, prefacing it. I don't know word for word. But essentially said she was like looking for food. Sure. And I just, I just, uh, and she, you should have seen her face <laughs> when I, when I said, when I, you know, when I said, uh, you know, gave her the, gave her the yeah, un yeah. universal, universal sign. She was like, uh, and I rolled down the window and I handed her my Big Mac. Oh. And like, I was wondering to see what, you know, if like, cause you know, you have the, I can look, you know, and see as I'm driving by whether she's like for real or like just like threw it away yeah. or fake. And it looked to me like, well, she kept she kept being there, but it seemed like she was real. But, you know, like you can't really tell people are real or fake anymore. It's sad. That is hard. There's you know, there's a lot of struggle in the world right now. Um, mm. And I just think the main thing is to always lead with kindness no matter what. Um and I think if you can leave with kindness and, but also still have your wits about you, yeah. um, 
then you can figure out who's genuine and who's not. Um, but at the end of the day, just always being kind, I think is the most important thing in the world. Well, you mentioned, you briefly mentioned the character earlier. What was the name of the, what was the name of the animated character? Animated character. Her name is Auntie E. So she started in 2006 when I was just an aunt. Um, mm -hmm. I, was an aunt. I mean, I it was, makes, it makes sense. Yeah. I mean, being <laughs> with five kids, I became an aunt at a very young age. Um, and I always loved teaching music to um, my nieces and nephews. And so it, it, it was born from that. Mm -hmm. um, and now she's been reanimated and revamped and um, there's a lot coming out with her and that will all come out in the spring. And I'm so excited to share it with everybody. When did, when did that vision, like, when did that vision all start? Like what you, I mean, you I honestly think she's always been with me. Um, yeah. I dream in color. Right. So like, mm -hmm. and I, I grew up with a very large musical theater background. So a lot of animation. I grew up belting all the Disney greats. Sure. Um, I mean, my whole life, right? So Little Mermaid and Aladdin <laughs> and Beauty and the Beast. And I mean, all of those. And so there's always been a mm -hmm. big passion within me to eventually have a large animated project. Um, and so it's just, it's been fun because she looks a lot like me. Like she's got this long red the hair. Yeah. And she's not very tall, you know, you know. I'm five two. And um, <laughs> she's got these students that um, follow her around and uh, she teaches them about music. And so there's a lot of uh, personal connection, obviously. I mean, she's born from me. Um, mm. And a lot of reflection of who I am as a person. Um, but she's been with me I, probably my whole life. But um, mm -hmm. 2006 is when she really started. What's the What was the hardest part of that? Like, I think the hardest part was originally when we did Auntie E, when I started, she was a half mm. animated ca character, half live action character. Mm. And it was really cute. We had this like live animation clip that would go on on stage and then she would walk through this animated door and then on the stage, there was a door and then I would mm. come out and I was on the other side. Oh, and I think the hardest part of the time was I outgrew the character. Um, I, I, as I grew towards wanting to, I was in a phase before I had kids, you know, of just kind of developing my own self. Um, and right. then, I kind of outgrew her and wanted to really do what I was wanting to work on at the time. And I knew that I would always come back to it. And so having my own children um, really like put the flame back under me to continue working on her. She was always there and I was always doing little things. Um, but we've started a really big overhaul um, on the whole brand and the <laughs> sound and the look and mm -hmm. everything coming out with it just to make it more current um because the animation over time has changed as well um and so yeah it's been really fun but she's she'll be back out <laughs> full blown in the spring yeah, you... up, everybody here she comes well you have a charity too right I do what I have a charity. it's <laughs> just now starting yes um it's really i'm so so proud to be um on this journey with this charity it's called twice the love foundation mm -hmm. Um, I decided that if I was going to come back out and really hit the ground running with all of this, that I was going to use my voice to pay it forward. I grew up with two very strong influences that always worked hard, but always paid it forward. Um, and were very involved in a lot of charity work, um, my whole life. And so I was raised with that mindset and I just figured if I had a platform that I could use to pay it forward, I would, but I wanted to make sure that whatever I did was very genuine and also very near and dear to my heart. Mm -hmm. And so being a single parent is the greatest treasure of my life. My children are everything to me. They're my biggest blessing. Um, but with being a single parent comes a lot of challenges. Um, I had an incredibly loving place to land, but a lot of single parents do not find that support on their journey. And so I feel that it's my duty to take my experience and help others um, socially, emotionally, and financially to mm -hmm. get back on their feet again. So Twice the Love Foundation, uh, we are starting with our first event. It's actually on Wednesday, November 2nd here in mm, Dallas. That's, that's uh, yeah, on the yeah, horizon yeah. there. Yeah, we uh, 
four weeks ago from yesterday, actually, <laughs> uh, or four weeks from yesterday, yeah. uh, we are doing a big benefit concert and we are raising money for the Genesis Women's Shelter. So we will raise money and donate uh, to more well-established charities as in the beginning. Right. And we're super excited because the Genesis Women's Shelter here in Dallas is amazing. Is there a and, website that people can yes, check out? Absolutely. So AaronDuvallOfficial.com slash twice the love. Uh, mm -hmm. You can figure out, you can learn all about twice the love. You can buy tickets uh, for the event. Uh, the tickets are all in the form of a donation. Um, and you can learn a little bit more about Genesis and twice the love. And um, it's at the AT&T Performing Arts Center here in Dallas. Uh, Dallas has an amazing arts district. I think we're actually third in the country, which is super cool. Um, beautiful arts district. And we're playing at Strauss Square, which is an outdoor venue. Um, and it will be, it will be lit. I tell you, it will be really you know cool. What the, that, that, that's what the kids say. That's apparently. what the kids, that's what, that's what my, you know, almost. <laughs> that's what the kids say. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's, let's get back to this, uh, to this song uh has how was how's the promotion been like did you guys start promoting this a while back or talk yeah. about talk about that it's been amazing um the, everybody's been really positive we've had a lot of positive feedback and people being very interested um you know everything with my life is it's about the three faces of Aaron so I'm a mom one avenue yeah another avenue is singer songwriter performer and then the other avenue is entrepreneurship with my charity and then also with the anti e brand <laughs> mm -hmm. um so it's really about trying to encourage people to unmask their faces and I feel especially in today's day and age that women um it's a wonderful time to be a woman because we had the ability to stand and do yeah anything I, would, I always i always live by the mantra like if all women stood together they could rule the world i know it sounds corny 100%. and like i, I know 100%. it sounds corny and but no man true. wants to have a baby i'm just saying <laughs> like, no i'm good i'm good they're tough right <laughs> who run the world girls no no uh, no but for I, real for real, <laughs> for real no though, i right? mean i i have amazing men in my life that are so incredibly supportive and i'm so grateful for them um, but yeah, I just, the, I, I think it's a really unique time to be a woman. Mm. And I think that we do wear so many hats or faces throughout the day. Uh, being a mom is a full-time job. And you ask any mother, it's the best job in the entire world. Um, but we also want to use our voices and our platforms to do other things as well and make right. a difference. And so I'm encouraging everybody to unmask their faces. You know, what are your faces? What are you... What do you stand for? What makes you tick? Make what makes you who you are? Mm -hmm. Um, because as women, we're you know moms, we're friends. <laughs> yeah, we're. No, I hear you. I hear you. Um, so, where can uh like, where can people get the uh get the song starting tomorrow? So actually, t midnight Eastern Standard well, Time. <laughs> all right well this probably won't be out until oh right okay like so, i'm sorry days, so. tomorrow to, yeah. <laughs> today ladies and gentlemen um on all streaming platforms under the sun we mm. will be everywhere so you just type in aaron duval walking mm. country song and it will pop right up there you go there you go who are some um like artists that you looked up to like you know getting into the um industry well, I mean, you know, everybody probably says this, but Dolly Parton was a huge <laughs> yeah. influence of mine. She's an amazing singer, songwriter, mm. entrepreneur herself. Um, Loretta Lynn, God rest her soul, was amazing. Um, Shania Twain, Trisha Yearwood, Reba McIntyre. I was Shania Twain <laughs> as yeah, a guy, of course, as a guy. I said this in another. I interview. always, I tell people, I say, I say. Like no one's hotter than like '90s Shania Twain. Oh, totally. Agree. <laughs> I mean, who be, who's been <laughs> under? I mean, get yeah. it, girl, right? Yeah, yeah. She was she like was amazing. She was hot. Yeah, and I think I I saw an interview <laughs> recently, and it was for Shania's tribute. But uh, Kelsey Ballerini said it right. She was mm -hmm. like, 
you know, Shania goes, oh, these are the lines of country. Yeah, no, we're going to move up. Right. And <laughs> yeah. I think she was one of the first women. I mean, Dolly, of course, was the first. Um, yeah, sure. But I think Shania really came in and laid a really beautiful foundation for women to come mm -hmm. in. And, and also on. Faith Hill, too. Can't forget oh, Faith. Absolutely. I mean, mm -hmm. oh, Faith she and Tamara, like the sound <laughs> of my childhood. Um, and George, I mean, George Strait, obviously, I'm a Texas girl. So George Strait is... <laughs> We're yeah. going out at the lake house. We could yeah, he's like a he's like a legend. He's the king. <laughs> really? I mean, the king, right? Uh he's amazing. Um, Garth Brooks, I have Willie Nelson. Oh god. I mean, I could go on for you go days. on and on. My mom, yeah. my mom raised me on country. So she she's oh, like she was like old country though, because she's like 60 something. So okay, she yeah. she was raised on like old country. Hanging. Like uh yeah, like and yeah. Dwight Dwight Yoakum and yeah. I don't even remember Dad. Dwight Dwight Yoakam oh, is. Of course. <laughs> of course. I mean, I even grew up listening to like some of Towns Van Zant stuff. I mean, <laughs> way back when, you know, so I mean, I think that uh the I think Dwight Yoakam's one of the most underrated artists of all time. Dwight Yoakam. People don't even talk about him much anymore. Yeah, I agree with that. He's so underrated. I mean, and Chris Christopherson. <laughs> I mean, we yeah. could go for days. We could go on. We could right? go on. I mean, <laughs> there's so many amazing people. And I think that's what's so amazing to me about the country music industry is that it's ever evolving. But still, while it's evolving, everybody mm -hmm. is always paying tribute to those that came before them and mm -hmm. laid that beautiful foundation work. Right. And I talked to another artist. I think it was also a Dead Horse artist. Um, like. Yes like new new country versus old country what in your opinion like what's the difference what's the main differences between the two i think that uh there are more genre blending in mm -hmm. new country um but i think that the the roots still exist but if you look at shania um mm. she was doing the same thing right Dolly's done some of the same thing um, I just think it's got a little bit of a different sound to it now. This is my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. But I think everybody is still nodding a lot to the past. I mean, Kelsey Ballerini's newest album, Subject to Change, mm -hmm. is a beautiful work of art. Um, and she talks about, too, you know, she's tipping her hat to all the greats. There's a lot of right. um, influences of Shania in her new album. Um, I think everybody's just playing with it now and kind of how can we turn it a little bit on its head right um, i mean i think taylor swift was one of the first i mean not one of mm -hmm. the first but i mean she did a lot and now obviously she sits much more over in another genre but she crossed but, over pretty pretty she did. Heavy, pretty heavily yeah, she crossed over pretty heavily um but yeah i mean like my music for example it is country to its core and mm -hmm. it is country to its core and it's songwriting and it's also country to its core and it's foundation work you also have blues though right there's a lot of blues. Yeah, There's that's why I noticed a lot of gospel. about it. There's a lot of, um, I did a lot of musical theater growing uh, up. So there's, it's, everything's huge production, mm. um, which is really fun. I just, uh, you can still strip it down and it sounds great with a guitar uh, or a piano, but it's mm. to its core, it's still country, uh, but it has all these fun uh, musical influences. And my producers are so cool. Uh, they're awesome guys. They're the Baker brothers. And, you know, they've done a ton of work. Uh, I've done a ton of work in the gospel scene. My, one of my producers just got off tour with Kirk Franklin. He's been Kirk Franklin's drummer for 22 years. I oh, mean, wow. Sold out Bridgestone in mm, Nashville. Yeah. Sure. Um, yeah. I mean, they are <laughs> incredibly talented, mm -hmm musicians um and producers and i feel grateful to work with them talk about um chaos real quick when that song that you one of the songs oh, yeah. you did yes. yeah talk about that song so we did that one also with baker brothers that song is um actually was inspired it's kind of interesting i was sitting in church one day and the minister was saying that to not let the chaos around you become what's within you. Mm. And I thought that that was such a powerful message. And at the time I was kind of taking it more to my life personally. Okay. You know, I've got these four kids and they're little and it's, you know, it's me and it's loud and it's okay. But you know, let's 
stop for a moment and realize, oh my gosh, we are so incredibly blessed. Everybody's healthy. We have a roof over our head. We have food on our table. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to be grateful for here, even if the moments can be chaotic and loud. And so at the time I was like, okay, that's what this is. But I wrote it down. And then the world kind of had a moment, right? You're talking about the pandemic? Yeah, the pandemic pandemic. hit. The pandemic hit. And then, you know, all the earthquakes and then the fires and then hurricanes. Mm. And I just felt like everywhere. Global warming. Yeah. I mean, I felt like everywhere I turned. I'm just messing. I'm just messing. No, I get you. But like, I felt like everywhere I turned, there was something going on. Mm -hmm. Um, And I felt like every time you turned on the TV, there was some other Mm. tragedy that was happening. And, and then I realized that that song was not just about me. It was really more about the world um, and how we needed love more than anything at that time. And so that's where chaos came from. Um, It is a beautiful song and I would hope that more people get to hear it. Well, yeah, (laughs) I checked it out. It's, it's good. Thank you. Um, Aaron, where can people find you on uh, social media? Um, well, Instagram's my jam. That's where mm-hmm. I hang my hat uh, for the most part. It's where most of my stuff goes. Um, so Aaron Duval Official. Mm-hmm. Um, we're on all the platforms. We're also on YouTube. And um, I've got a great website, AaronDuvalOfficial.com. You can find everything there yeah. that you want to find. There are all the YouTube videos. Check it out. Yeah. Check it out, guys. <laughs> it's great. All right. Before you go, do you got a fun story uh, about, you know, playing somewhere or anything? Oh, God. Let's see. I've got a lot of them. What would be the best one now? Land. They don't got to be nothing like crazy. Oh, my gosh. There's so many of them. Um. Eeny, meeny, miny. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm like actually trying to like, oh no, can't say that one, no. Well, I don't care. No. You can say what you want to say. I don't care. Oh no, some of them you should keep to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, Let's see. Well, I mean, now, I think the funniest thing now is that when I perform, I've got all these little <laughs> children backstage. Mm-hmm. So the life, of uh our stage life is very different than it used to be um and i think Mm. that's what's really what makes it so special is that it's become a family adventure for me and so it's like your own it's like your own mafia back there (laughs) yeah we're you know the the family von trap right you know like um all my kids love music and um yeah now it's really about um me leaving a legacy for them And everything Mm. that I do is in, um, it's always, they're always the top of my mind. And what can I do for them? Because my parents laid a great foundation for me and I want to leave a really good one for them. So now it's, now it's the family show. (laughs) Yeah, they go, they go everywhere with you, huh? They, you know, I really (laughs) try very hard not to, to leave them. Um, Yeah, Mm. they're they're my peeps. We have a very special bond, the five of us. And um, yeah. If I, if I go somewhere and they don't go with me, it's, you know, because it's one night here or one night there, but yeah, for the most part. Or you're part. doing a, or you're doing a podcast. Or I'm doing it. a podcast. <laughs> I got one at a football practice right now. Oh, okay. I got okay. one doing homework. <laughs> you know. Homework. That's a good thing. Yeah. More homework. Well, more no, homework. No, his homework is all due tomorrow. Oh, I will like, done. <laughs> well, I was a substitute teacher, so I, I, I know all about homework. Well, I mean, I, I, I am a proponent of you must do it, but I also am not the, the mom that's going to ruin my relationship with my child over, over, over eight times six, you know? Yeah. I'm like, no, <laughs> you have to build your own skills to do this because when you get to high school, mommy mm-hmm. is not holding your hand. And when you get to college, I am really not holding your hand. So yeah, yeah, yeah. all the <laughs> equations are on your own, you know? Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> if you have a actual legit question, I'm here for you. But mm. I am not sitting next to Oh, my you. mom. My mom never even. She's like, you're going to college. You got to do it on your own. I mean, you I'll do. I'll help you I every have, once in yeah. a while. Nowadays, I feel like people are a little, you know what I mean? But like, it's it's uh, it's just a change of the times, you know? Yeah. Well, my kids, because there's, you know, me and there's four kids. Like, <laughs> we don't come downstairs for school unless we are mm. fully dressed, teeth are brushed, beds made. No, but what I'm saying we, is like, there's participation. Laundry's coming down. 
But like even in sport, like amateur sports, there's participation trophies and you know what I mean? Yeah, you can get a little bit of that on the younger end. I find that uh, the older my It didn't used to be like that, though. When I was a kid, I was like eight. I was eight. If you didn't get first, sometimes if you if you didn't even get first, you didn't get nothing. Right. I get dependent. Like most of them. It also depends on, you know, what leagues you're in. (laughs) who you're with and i mean i bet got- you didn't expect to talk about under six soccer i bet you didn't hey, <laughs> hey, <man. laughs> all i know is that I, i'm a texas longhorn it's texas ou weekend baby and uh <laughs> come on hook them horn let's go <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah uh yeah real quick uh so texas so um quite a long history you know colt mccoy <laughs> colt mccoy vince young D.Y. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was in college during the Mac Brown era. He's yeah. a wonderful man. Um, awesome coach. He's now mm-hmm. you know, UNC Tar Heels. Go Tar Heels. Yeah. Um, he's awesome. And it was a great run with him. And we've, you know, we've had, we've had our moments. And I think sometimes the programs going. Every cycle. program has had their moments. Yeah. Even Alabama before Saban, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> I think that. The hard times make you appreciate the good ones even more. And um, we've had great coaches. I think Coach Sark's awesome. Um, And I'm looking forward to, you know, where we're going. And Well, yeah, um, he turned around Washington up there, I think. Yeah, he's amazing. You know, anyone that can turn around Washington, (laughs) you know. Well, and I think, too, you know, his number one focus are the are those kids and um, those mm-hmm. players love playing for them. And you can just feel the energy when they're playing. They, they feel like mm-hmm. a well-bonded unit. Um, and I'm excited for them. I think, I think we've got a bright future. And again, I think the, the times that we were having a harder time, those are your learning years and they make you grateful <laughs> for the good times. Exactly. So, now, and now recruiting, you know, is better. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. All that. Oh, yeah. yeah. I follow all that stuff. All the a- transfer, the transfer portal. Well, yeah, the, the NIL things, you know, shook all that up. But <laughs> all right, Aaron, this has been a blast. This has like been Thank one of my. This you. has been one of my favorites. I've. Uh, this has been good. This has been good. <laughs> uh, I like the energy. You have good energy. I like it. Thank you. You're so sweet. Well, thank you so much for having me. Uh, everybody will go download the new single "Walking mm. Country Song," and then, uh, yeah, follow along. I I talk a lot on my Instagram platform, and it's usually pretty. Fun. I talk a lot too. <laughs> hey that's what made this easy right yeah exactly Always well I mean, better when as a podcast talk. host i should be able to talk about i would hope so. <laughs> that would that would be a little scary <laughs> all right well, thank you for having me i really appreciate keep in it. touch all right and I will, everyone sure. everyone check out aaron duvall instagram all that spotify all the amazon things. music apple music. are you on tiktok are you with all the kids I'm on TikTok. I'm I'm not the I'm not the best at the TikTok. I know, I know. Mm. Someone go make a dance for Walking Country Song, and then I'll TikTok for you. Do okay? it. Do it. All right. Come on. Have a good Thank night. You. Thank you again. And, and uh, yeah, there you go. There you go. Bye. Bye. Have a good one. See ya. See ya.